All right, yeah, just um, passing on some instructions. All right, so we'll bounce out of this, and we'll be back later. Nope, no, we don't have to bounce. We should be good. We should be there good. There we go. All right. Whoa. What I'm going to do is to save me not having to bounce out. We'll have a good, quick chat. I just want to give you some good news. And then we'll come back with the second broadcast in about another five minutes. All right. So the good news is that your song on Cricket Cops, uh, no, uh, rehearsal with the Cricket Cops tomorrow, you have a featuring song on it called Only One. And, right. And Matt has just heard the master and he said it's wicked. Yo, I haven't heard it. I haven't heard it. Yeah, so he's just heard the master, and he's just um, because I was trying to get him to come on and pop in and do a bit of a spiel on, um, you know, join join in with you and do a spiel with Veronica's, but he, he's not at home. Um, wherever he is, he's going to be watching. So let's bounce it out of this, and I'll um, actually no, let's just let's do this. Wasting yeah, trying to do something else at the same time. All right, so. All right, guys, uh, thank you for wherever you're watching. We're live uh, here in New Zealand, and uh, it's been rainy and a very beautiful sunny day in Whangarei, Northland. Um, hello to everyone everywhere watching. Uh, if you're watching locally, thank you. If you're watching around the world, thank you. And hopefully you're safe and you're, you know, you're keeping calm and, and your family's keeping well. Um, so from all of us here, keep well. Right, so I want to introduce you guys to a friend of mine, a local um, celebrity in the hip-hop um, community. Uh, and also not only just that, but also in the music community, which is really cool because um, he's part of a whole lot of, um, l l quite a few musical um, groups and um, and um, parts of different facets of what's going on in Northland here, and especially here in Whangarei. And it's just awesome to finally sit down with my bro again. And it's it's been a while. Uh, he's been very busy, uh, and uh, and I'm very excited. So MC Black Sword, take it away. Introduce yourself. Hey, um, what's going on, fan? Tēnā koutou katoa. Ko trei pe tamataku ingoa. Ko manai te munga, ko whangari te ringa parawa te moana, ko takahiwa te whenua, ko patuhara kiki te hapu, ko ngāpuhi te iwi, nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, kero mai tātou katoa. And a special shout out to my man for putting me on tonight. Thank you very much, oh. brother. I appreciate that. And um, what's up to the community, man? If you're, if you're tuning in locally from Northland or even from Aotearoa, what's going on? If you tune in internationally, what's going on? And I gotta say, man, you got your Beagle Radio voice on. I like that. I like that. <laughs> it's just my normal voice. Yeah, man, it sounds good. Um, so tell me what's been happening with you. I mean, uh, like I, uh, we were just talking earlier, and I'm gonna leave that in there. And um, about this new song that you've got, that like, uh, you know, Matt, who's like. Um, who's a bass player, but he does a lot more in promotion sites and he's involved in, the, in a punk band. He's, you know, does a lot more. And so as well as working full time. Shout out yeah. to Maddie. Uh, Matt Shepard from The Rock Shop. Um, so yeah. tell us what you've been up to. Uh, well, you know, as everybody knows, there's um, nothing new that we've been in lockdown. Mm. So I guess... Musically, I've just been I'm I've just been writing, using the time, uh, spare time, just to write some new music. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still doing that now. I am wanting to put out like a bit of an EP and just get back into doing um, shows again because I really miss that, and I miss making music in general because um, yeah, I haven't done it for so long. I mean, I'm always writing. But I actually just getting into the process of putting something down and then going out into the community and doing a show and, you know, all that good stuff, man. And just being a part of the community. I mean, you know, you know what that's like. Mm. You know, you know what's up with that. Being a part of the community is good for your soul. It's good for people. It's good for exactly. everybody. You know, everybody benefits from that shit. Yeah. 
So yeah, yeah you connect, important. you connect, yeah. you uh, you pass on your energy to them, and they pass on your um the energy to you, and together you're well. Yeah, yeah, man. So um, yeah, that's all I've been doing is just writing, just writing some songs, um, just writing stuff that I want to do because you know there's um. Um, hip hop music is always changing, and um, our age is always changing as well. Mm. So, I mean, for somebody like myself, I'm 37. So, um, other dudes who are also making music at my age or around my age, um, especially in hip hop, a lot of people tend to maybe want to stay relevant. And I mean, mm. I've thought about that myself. But then, I mean, with the internet nowadays. Um, you can specifically just do whatever the fuck you want to do and target that to the audience that you want to, you know, that you yeah. want to give it to. You know, you can just bypass everybody else who ain't digging that shit. So, you know, like my demographic will be everybody who was born in the 80s, listening to music yeah. in the 90s, the 2000s, that shit. And that's the beauty about the internet, man. I love that. So, yeah, I'm just writing what I want to write. And, you know, I just don't like, doing hip-hop music. I mean, I started in an acoustic hip-hop band, so it was already different anyways. Yeah. And then just doing my own music and then working with other bands like Ferrandicus. Shout out to Ferrandicus. And, yeah, everybody that's in their band. And um, just having a band behind you while, you, while you're on the microphone is just is, is totally another energy, man. It's totally something yeah. different. Only those I mean, who know they... will know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I did that a while back, like in, the, in uh, 2000, when we were, and it was only two songs. It was only two songs, and you had a, like a, you know, the whole guitarist, bass player and stuff, and there was two of us just hip-hopping on stage, and you turn, and you wait for the guy to do his lick, and you that, that whole that energy that comes from being someone there, rather than having a, having a um, yeah, say a, a sound machine, right? Like a music, yeah, um, it's like a backing beat or something. It's, you can't turn to your CD player and go, "Hey, man, that was good," you know. Yeah, and you're right. And um, so let's talk about this EP you're thinking about. I mean, you're right. looking at doing. Um, how much songs are you going to put? On, like, what's your um number of songs you're looking at putting on this EP? Um, maybe just like five, but five songs that. You know that I really, that I'm really confident, that I'm really, really happy to put out as well. Because the difference this time around, this will be the first time I've ever made my own EP as well. So um, I wanted to do everything right this time because. Um, oh, hold on, hold on. The, who, who are you doing this with, sorry? Oh no, just myself. Just making my own. Just oh, my I own said EP. you said I don't know. somebody some name there. Oh no, I'm just saying that I'm um, like. Before every other song that I've made or all the mm. beats that I've been on has either come from YouTube or mm. mostly just YouTube. So, you know, so like this time I've started buying my own beats, purchasing beats and okay. just like, you know, just another level up so that I can actually, um, uh, yeah, I can actually do something else with them. Like, you know, I could send them off to somebody who could stream it like, people like yourself, bloggers and all that other shit and put it on Spotify and wherever else it can go, you know, and, and monetize yeah. on that shit because they can't do yeah. it on uh, rapping over YouTube beats because that ain't mine. You know what I mean? It's that yeah. copyright infringement and all that other bullshit. So I decided yeah. to maybe, um, invest in myself. I mean, because I've invested in myself before by selling t-shirts and um, amazing that done pretty good for what it was when I was doing it. Oh, so we'll, we'll get back to the t-shirt one later because I was, I was going to ask you about that. Carry on. Oh, yeah, but I'm just saying, like, if I can invest in myself doing that, I might as well invest in my music as well. I mean, that's the first thing that people are going to hear anyway, so yeah. you know, might as well go up that extra level and just start paying for something so that it's. Yeah, I, it just makes me feel like that. I should take it a bit more seriously because I'm investing in my craft. Yeah. And I think um, when you invest in yourself, you feel a bit more strength in what you do, right? Uh, you feel, uh, I don't know if it's the right word. I've, I've been trying to get people to describe to me what mana means, but having um, that in yourself because you know that uh, right? that the spirit or whatever it is in you, 
it flows out into the real thing that you're doing because you believe in yourself because you're investing in yourself you're putting that time in there into your work but you're investing in the technology and the beats and it becomes yours right and then when you're writing yeah. on top of that it's like writing on it's your music is a canvas on what you paint your artwork on with your yeah, words pretty much pretty much so that's, that's uh, pretty much it how many songs are you looking at this EP? Like, I'm trying to get back to that. Um. Oh, right. So maybe I just want to put, I've been thinking like a solid five songs, mm. but then I thought maybe I'll put five songs and on the actual EP, it will only say five songs, but then I could chuck in another five songs that aren't listed there right at the end. Mm. So the EP will finish and only those who leave that shit playing for a little bit longer then the next shit will drop in. So, you know, it's like a hidden yeah. Easter egg or some shit. That only the I ones who need the will find it. You know, like, that's yeah. that old school shit. You know, that it nobody is. does it anymore. Is. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, that I want to do that, track. man. That hidden trick. I mean, it's totally uh, 80s and 90s stuff. And I really, yeah. like, I mean, I'm, you know, the other week I celebrated my 47th and I got on here and I did my 10 songs. You know, it's my 10 right. albums. And, Hip hop was part of that. NWA, Public Enemy was part of that. Truck or Quest, you know. Um, oh. But he's in the blue, um, BK Lounge. All that stuff is always still in my head from the from eighties and nineties, you know. And I think um, what I miss, and I really, and I remember I, I sent you a text saying I'm going to be on my A game today, right? The reason I said that is because I'm at a loss with like the current hip hop. I really am because uh, I'm all about the about the lyrics. I'm all about the lyrics, and I've yeah, always been about right. the story behind the lyrics. You know, when uh, Burn Hollywood Burn, right, comes out, and you know there's a whole reason why that song is called that, and, you know, why there's a story behind that from, you know, from Public Enemy. And same with NWA, with, you know, Dope Man, Dope Man, you know, um, and yeah. stuff like that. And I sort of miss that storytelling now. Um, and I think, um, you know, when you look at the current thing, and, and dude, the N-word is used so many times in one song now that you go well, why don't they call them brother bros friends my mates my blue what's why not yeah. all that and just not use the n-word i mean use it one or two times cool but when i get to sing that if i want to sing along with that i feel icky icky you know and so people and that's not just me that's everybody around the world that isn't black right? yeah a darky yeah. like me has a problem saying that but the problem i have with that is that in fiji my cousins are calling themselves the n-word yeah. and i'm thinking slap 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 and i'm thinking but i can't say that because they grew up listening to this and treating each other like that so i i'm like please get back to the lyrics and um and i do love the hip-hop i do and I, I love the beats bro i i the beats the beats you know the the heavy hard beats the bass and um and man the bass has always been my thing when it comes to hip hop music, you know. Right. And uh, and you getting back to the, you know, that old, what you grew up with, and I think that's that's the authenticness of it. If you pretend to be somebody else, you lose your audience anyway because they go, ah, oh, faker, you know. Uh, what we yeah. used to call um, uh, posers. We used to call posers to uh, skateboarders who would just like get the coolest looking skateboard and wouldn't be able to do anything. Whereas we'll right, be like having this right. really is looking thing and be trying to pull off. Yeah. So right. The cool thing is you already mentioned with YouTube is that, and um, that we can right now, we can put this on YouTube and you people will see it around the world. You could cut up this thing and advertise yourself, promote yourself on every platform you can think of. And that's yeah. the greatness of this thing. But then you still want to stay to your authenticness of the eighties and nineties and be able to do that. And I think you, the way you're doing it is amazing. And I've always loved that about you, that you, you don't change for whatever's, you know, current. Um, tell me, I mean, what may, motivated you to get into hip hop? Um, well, like I would, I think like, well, obviously it would start from my parents and the music that they listened to. I mean, hip hop wasn't around at their time, but I mean, the roots of hip hop was around. You know what I'm saying? So we already had jazz music. We already had blues music. Already had some sort of R&B out there. So, you know, it was already out there floating around. And, like, when I was born in the 80s, so, 
I mean, by that time, it was definitely, you know, the wheels were turning around that time. And um, when I was born, my older sister used to be a B-girl. So she was already into, like, the hip-hop movement anyway. She was already, like, 16, and she was breakdancing in Auckland City with her girls and, you know, all the other B-boys yeah. and B-girls around at that time. They used to go down to Altia Square. So, I mean... I was kind of like fortunate enough just to be almost born into it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And my music had all, my, my sister had all the music that was out at that time, you know, African Bavada and all those other dudes. And so, yeah, man, I was just fortunate. My sister was really on with music, so I just listened to her music and she pretty much like schooled me up to it. And yeah, yeah. I mean, Public Enemy was my definitely my favorite hip hop crew when I was a kid, you know, Public Enemy. Mm. Public Enemy was killing it. And more specifically, Flavor Flav. I mean, that clock, you know, and the way yeah. that, you know, his persona and the way that he that he did him, did Flavor Flav, mm. yeah. It was awesome. And I mean Chuck D just came with those heavy hitting rhymes and it was just like fucking yeah. unfuckable. You can't fuck with that. No, you can't. You, and that's the thing about it. It's like, you, the, um, and you know, like, I mean, the roots of, are always there. And I think whenever, um, if you, if you forget that, right, you forget the base of like, uh, of, uh, of the music, you, you can veer off in so many other stuff, but if you come back to it, it's always there to, you know, to, um, get, uh, to move on. I've just thought of something. Um, you look at Beastie Boys, right? The first, white boys to get signed on to Def Jam. Yeah. The first white boys to get signed on Def Jam, a punk band. They were a punk band who decided to do hip hop or, you know, to do rap and stuff. And look at where they are. They just took that thing all over the world with that, you know, and Def Jam just blew them out. I, I think um, when, um, when, when it, be you know, you, you've got these amazing lyricists, you know the MCs. I was I was reading. Um, I was listening, looking at the um, the history of hip hop and stuff, and uh, and there's a you know I think the Family Tree, the hip hop Family Tree comic book yeah. that came out, and you know that's how I I mean, and they looked at how you know the the sister chucked the guy out. Oh, uh, you know the history of it was chuck the guy out. Get on the street and sing your freaking thing. Stop you know doing it at home and. You know, and then, so there was this whole backing from the family. And like you said, your sister was, you know, B-girl. Um, you know, I remember breakdancing in the 80s was huge in our school, in our primary school, you know. And, uh, oh, we got Ryan. We got brother yeah. Ryan watching. So what's, what's the up? best, of all time, time, the best hip-hop album of all time? Which one? I would have to, like, for me personally, I would, from, okay, so from out of New Zealand, for me personally, I would have to say it was written by Nas. Like, you know, mm. he, to me, is the pinnacle of what a lyricist or an NC should be. Because that mm. motherfucker is telling stories, and his wordplay is insane. And I would say for Aotearoa, Oh man, it's so hard, but I would have to say to co Papa Driven Rhymes Uplifted by Damn Native or to be specific by Shea Fruit. Either one of those two. Because mm. they both heavily influenced me as a team. Like, especially for Aotearoa music. Aotearoa hip hop at that time was awesome, man. New Zealand music yeah. at that time, period, was awesome. So yeah, I would say those the, those two albums from <laughs> Out of Aotearoa and from here. Illmatic. Oh uh, yeah, Illmatic was though too. I like Illmatic, but I I, I mm. like um it was written better. That's mm. just that's just my own. Uh, I, I'm like with me because uh, I don't listen to a lot of New Zealand music, and um and I think uh, it's my own fault. But that's because of the way I was raised. Uh, my home didn't have any music, New Zealand music in it. Um, my my uh, uh, Poye, right? That song with um, you know, uh, with a break dancer on there. Uh, and that time was when I got into hip hop with Back um, Beach Street, right? Right, in the eighties. And so I was Iron Maiden and got into um, 
NWA when I moved to Auckland, but I had Public Enemy, takes a nation of th um, thousands to hold us back. Um, you know, the powerful lyrics. But um, I think Shea Fu. Yeah. Shea yeah. Fu for me. The uh, legend. Chains. The Chains. I think the chains yeah. really, uh, that sort of really for me made me realize because I wasn't in this, you know, listening to local music, but chains really made me go, hmm, we have something good here, you know? Yeah. And um, and bef just before he came out onto his own, he had, um, uh, can't go under it, can't go around it, got to go Super over group. it. Super group, right? And that sort of basically showed us that New Zealand music could be really popular and be really solid and very, very funky and be very uh, sellable because it was good. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of times um, people, um, you know, um, they think they have the product, but they don't know how to produce it to sell it, you know, to, to be able to promote it. And a lot of times the promotion is, 50% of the job. And, um, yeah. you know, we were talking this morning with, um, on 12, you know, early on today with a guy from America talking about the business side of comic books, right? right? And so there's a business side of music that people don't understand and they get lost in it. I mean, you look at um, one of our worst uh, case uh, hip hop artist stories, right? Got onto P and just lost it, everything. And, but if, I think the greatness of it is that we have amazing talent in New Zealand on every yes. sector. On yes. every sector, we have great talent. And um, I think as long as the talent gets um, oh, next to um, the right producers, the right people, the people that actually care about the music, care about the person, they can go far. I mean, you look at our... Um, uh, our metal group at the moment. Um, gosh, I can't remember the name. Alien Ryan Fobby does. Sorry? Alien Weaponry. That's it. So, like, you look at how far they've gone, right? And they're from local boys down here. So, Yo. I think the idea is that um, as long as you do you, right? Yeah. As long as you do you and don't try to be anybody else, as long as you do you, um, and I and I love what you're doing with everybody that you know with part of your cruise. I mean, I think everything everybody you involve with, they just are uplifting people, right? Like yeah. you said, friendicus. They're uplifting people. They care about what they're doing. Um, I was talking to Matt, yeah. and I'm going to have Matt on soon, but he's just got him busy now. The shops are opening, it, and he's talking about the promotion side of it, like really promoting what you guys are doing. And I mean, when your EP comes out, right? Um, you're going to be dropping it on what SoundCloud, uh, Spotify, and all that, or because they're going to take a cut, right? Or are you yeah. just going to go, you know, sell it, sell it on your own, uh, put it on a Patreon thing, and or where are you going with that? Um, so the big reason why I wanted to buy Beats is so I could put it on Spotify. Mm. So I want to do it digitally. But I'm still going to do it old school, bro. I'm going to get some CDs pressed or some USBs pressed. I'm going to set up at the market downtown. And I'm going to sell it. I'm going to make T-shirts and sell this shit. And I'll stand there from 6 to 12 or whenever they close. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to do it the old school way, bro. Do you, right. like, Let me ways. suggest something. Let me suggest something that I think might actually go even further for you. Crowdfunding. Right? Crowdfund the EP and right. what goes with it. You want your T-shirt? Hey, here's another 10 bucks, and you get your T-shirt with the, with the album. I think the, this is the grassroots way of doing things, right? You're going to the people and doing it. And, I mean, yeah. we're doing that with comic books. We're going to the people. We're bypassing the, you know, the big overheads and just going to the, directly to people going here. You know, this is what we believe in and stuff. Uh, and I, I think... You're so proactive is what amazes me. You're so proactive in the community. Uh, every time there's something that you, that's uh, festival-wise, you're there. You're there. And, and, and you bring the vibe, Try right? You MC for the um, – like, I mean, you MC what? Um, the art, uh, art beat this year? 
no, not this. I've emceed quite a few events, but no, I didn't get to do that. I didn't get what, to do so, RP. What's it like emceeing actual events? It's it's good practice. It's very good practice, and I mean, like for me, and I guess um, for other people such as yourself, we have the how do I put this? We have the opportunity and and the blessings of being able to go into our local radio station and get our radio voice really, really tight and get it mm. sounding really, really good. We can use the radio station as a sort of like a practice room. You know what I'm saying? That's mm. what I use it as. So that, you know, I use it as that. So when I go and host as an MC, I've already done that practice in the radio station. Yeah. And I've got my radio voice or whatever. You know, that's that's what I call it, anyways. Yeah. And um, yeah, I I really like hosting events because then I can um, I can just be me, and I mm. and because it's it's a different, it's not hip hop, it's something totally different. Um, you know, I can put on a suit and shit, and just be mm. more presentable because it's it's you know, it's you have to take that shit a bit more seriously. And, you know, have a bit more professionalism about you. Well, that's my opinion anyways. Yeah. And it's just like, it's it's the same thing to me, man. I mean, I, I still feel like I'm performing. I still have to talk to people and interact with people, you yeah. know. So it's, it's kind of the same to me. I still have to make shit up on the spot. So, I mean, that's, that's hip-hop. You freestyle in hip-hop, man. I do the same thing yeah. when I'm hosting. People say, man, you done an awesome job. I'm like, man, if I told you I made 90% of that shit up on the spot, would you hire yeah. me again? <laughs> but that's nah, the but fun it's of it. Like, it's like, I mean, I don't even write anything down when I'm, I mean, I don't write anything beforehand about what I'm doing, what I'm going to ask people. And usually yeah. because I'll take notes while I'm doing it, then I go go back to it. So which talking about which, let's talk about Cat City. It's Cat City, isn't it? Yeah. Just the yeah. t-shirt thing. All right. Let's talk about Cat City and tell me all about that and how that hey. come about. Oh, so I, I went on to, um, I just went on to Instagram and I typed in local, like just keywords, Day clothing and Cat City popped up and I thought, hey man, these guys are in my city. Why don't I just reach out to them? I mean, they're brand new. I mean, mm. I'm doing a lot of I'm doing a lot of shows. I'm not big time, but the shows that I'm, the festivals especially, you know, there's eyes there, and that's all to me. That's yeah. what's important. I mean, like, whether you're big or not, if you're small time and you're performing at a festival where there's 2,000 people, that's still 4,000 eyes. doesn't matter. Mm. So I just thought, hey, man, why don't I just reach out to them? And, you know, I'm on my journey. If I can help somebody else get their mm. – their gears out there, then, hey, why not? I mean, what's the worst that could have happened? They could have just said, no, my journey still would have still kept going anyways. So, no, yeah, man. Nothing I got, ventured, I nothing gained. Hmm. Ventured, nothing out. gained. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so this is just on Instagram that you reached out to them? Yeah, I just reached out to – yeah, I just used Instagram and I just reached out, to, I messaged Cat City and then – from there, I got to meet them, you know, Tish and, and her team. Shout out to Tish and the team. And, um, yeah, man, we've just built on top of that. And, you know, we're, we're cool, man. We're good. We have a good relationship. And they're very community orientated as well. So, yeah, I'd like to think that I like to surround myself with like-minded people. You know what I mean? I mean, like, here I am talking to you. You're the same. So, yeah. So, um. So these guys print their own clothing uh, as well as T-shirts, or is it just T-shirts? No, they do like quite a um, a big range. Of, like they got a quite a quite a few. Um, how do I? I? I don't really know fashion, but they got a, quite a few lines. So like yep. you know, they've put out a certain line like here. Hoodies, T-shirts, caps. Yeah, oh. yeah, and they do like so it's all specials and stuff. They they do. So they just about or drop or one for JD. Pardon? Streetwear or hip hop wear? Um, I'd say it's streetwear because you know I'll, I'll just say streetwear. I don't really want to put a label on it because yeah. Um, but if you want to know more, because you know I'm not doing the justice, you can just um go on and 
catcity.com. You'll find out all the information there. And they got dope gears, man. Yeah, shout outs to the locals doing their thing, man. And that's the thing, and, and and that's why I kept you um doing this stuff um like uh, connecting with people like this because there is so much amazing creativity in our in our city, in our area, yeah. and um and a lot of people don't know and I, and I was surprised four four years ago about this six years ago about this when I realized uh, I think that I when I attended I think might have been uh, Creative Technologies Northlands but one of their things I was like there's so many amazing people that are really professional people in Whangarei that people aren't aware of and you know and then when we started doing the radio right with Beagle I was like let's get people to know them and now we're doing it again this way but I think the more connected we become the more we realize that so much amazing stuff is happening in our city and and the way you you know you've been able to connect with without even knowing these guys existed by Instagram you know using yeah. social media and I mean, I got into social media because of you, like on Instagram and all that, you right? On Twitter because of you, yeah. because I was you're like, this, 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 this. I'm like, really? Yeah. Right? And here we are talking about this now. So tell me about your music, like influence on the music. Like my influence on the music? Uh, like what influences on your, my music? Yes. Right. Like musical uh, influences on you. Oh, damn. Right. Oh yeah, so I won't I won't even mention my musical influences that aren't from Aotearoa. I mean they're very important because the culture came from, you know, outside. But I mean yep. I just feel like it's more important to put a shining light on the people that helped me. Because I thought mm -hmm. when when um like in the nineties and stuff and after that, that's when New Zealand hip hop was really, really, really popping. And so I was really heavily influenced by people from my own country. And I think that's yeah. fucking awesome. I mean, it's yeah. awesome that, you know, all, you know, the Americans um, started this shit. And it's just so great that um, the culture is so open and so big that, you know, wherever you live around the world, you can take that and then make it your own. So, you know, mm. since we're a Polynesian country, we just took that and put our Polynesian flavor on top of it and, and, you know, here we are. We have that native. We have yeah. Shefu. We have fucking what's well, Nisha Mystic, and you know Decons, and it and go on yeah. and so on and so on, man. Yeah. D five. Oh, is it D ten or D five? Uh, oh, like Decepticons and Decepticons. Yeah. Yeah, man. And P Money and DJ Severe and ah, oh. but yeah, I would have to say Shefu probably definitely is up there, man. Shefu mm -hmm. is one of my favorite ever artists of all time and yeah man um i was I'm and he really wrote really, right really well Pardon? i mean he wrote about him you know he wrote really well songs about himself and his environment he didn't like try to put on anything and that's what was really cool you know yeah. can't break my chains help me out right yeah it's just you know you can't forget lyrics like that or who yeah. else um uh, so i grew up in auckland city in a town called Onehanga, which is more famous now yeah. because of Swidit. But at the time yeah. when I was coming up, there was a crew called Red Eye Society. And so those were the boys that really, like, you know, neighborhood wise, community wise, those were the guys who influenced me because I, I knew that some of them just lived around the corner from me. You know what I mean? And I, and I heard them rapping and shit, and I thought, holy shit, this is incredible. And they were doing shows, and then they got signed to Dawn Raid. And I thought, man, if these motherfuckers from my hook can't do it, shit, why can't, why I, can't I do I? it? Yeah. And so, yeah, that's, they, they it, really, really influenced me and yeah. inspired me to do that, man. Yeah, that's pretty much I mean, it, brother. Yeah, it's like, if they can do it, why can't I? And there's a difference between the spectators and the motivators, right? The motivators basically go, mm, yes, I like that, but I'm sure I can do a bit more, you know, I, I can do it myself. And then not only that, then you say, hey, I can help you do some more as well. Whereas you've got the spectators go, yeah, yeah, that's good. And I'm going to sit back and just watch. And I think I'll, that influence, I think, 
from the Pacifica that comes. And, I, and, and here's why I get annoyed at people talking about cultural appropriation. We in the Pacific appropriate everything. We do. From the plastic, um, plastic flowers, right, from China, mm -hmm. to all the way to the, uh, to the uh, friggin' uh, corn beef cans and our artwork, right? <laughs> and, we, and we cut up tires to make flowers for our garden. Um, what do we call it? Like, jeez, uh, I always forget our words. Uh, planted, planters. Like, we cut yeah. up the tires right. into flowers. And we appropriate everything because we don't have anything that we manufacture ourselves, mostly in the islands. So we just take whatever it is and we bring it in. And the great thing about hip hop, which I love, and just like and heavy metal, right? You can go, you can find it in North Korea, and yeah. you can find it in India, and you can find it in South Island, and you can find it in North Island, Australia. Why? Music has this amazing touch, and I think. Um, the great thing is that every culture puts their own little touch to it. Yeah. You know, um, it's just, um, and that's the great thing of it. And uh, I mean, tell us a bit about um, what happened to um, Red Eye Society. Um, well, I, from my understanding, um, I think they're still going. So I think they're still um, making music and stuff. I don't know if they're doing shows anymore, but. Um, Red Eye Society were around uh, like ninety six mm. at the time when they started because they were only kids at high school too, or just out of high school. Yeah, so, you know. And from what I know, their biggest influence was Wu Tang's, and you know they they got a heavy yeah. um, influence of Wu Tang in their music, especially with the rhymes and the mm. way that this like how raw it is and how this. Just the yeah, it's just the raw sound of the hip hop mm. sound, like it's shitty beats and grimy and gritty. And I yep. mean, you know, I love everything about that sound because that sounds from my time and my era. Whereas now everything's really polished and clean. You know, get that rag out and shine that shit. Yeah, yep. I, I mean that's dope too. But I mean, like I like that yep. raw gritty sound. It's just like almost you just hear it right there out on the street kind of shit. Mm. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I mean, we come from a culture where, you know, uh, stereos on shoulders. I mean, I do at 47, right? And the music, the boombox era, I, I kind of I miss that. The whole boombox era of just the whole putting it down, right? And start mm -hmm. going off and like there's two guys just bouncing off each other. This, that whole freestyling you mentioned earlier. And we're now like it's been so polished, and there's so much millions and millions of dollars behind every artist. It's become where it's like, what's the more craziest thing I can do to stay popular? You know, uh, you know, and um, how much more I can do to just make that more. You know, that's the idea of um, whenever it comes to you notice it in people's music. You know, how it gets more ridiculous about what they what they think about or how they dress it gets more ridiculous and the great thing about um what a, there's a difference between a female rapper and a male rapper right it's so much the weird thing that really um that really weirds me out is it the demand on a female hip-hop artist is so much about sex compared to a male hip-hop artist right where they're both doing the same thing yet the demand on them is to expose more, whereas the other guy is like, get your beats better, get your beats better. And it's like, no, get show more, show more. What I love about how it transitions to where we are is that in New Zealand, we haven't had to do that without, uh, without Wahine, right? We haven't had to do that. We haven't said to a Wahine, hey, take more clothes off to get popular. Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember, um, uh, out of those girls out of South Auckland, um, you probably know them, I, I just... The names aren't flushing, but um, on my street, something on my street. Um, da -da, da -da 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 -da. Oh, gosh, I hate it when I can't remember too. But, um, you know, we don't expect it of our Waini, right? And I love that about New Zealand and about the Pacific, that we don't put that honest on them. We're like in, in America and, and, you know, in England, they would do that. But I like that the fact that we just go, what's your music 
sing a song, yeah. put it out. And, uh, and I think, I think that we, we hopefully will never get to that area where we go, Hey, you got to sell your soul to do this, you know, because I think um, the, uh, the fact that we have at our fingertips, the whole entire world through the medium that we have. And I think, um, how have you found it like trying to get your music out there? Like with, um, you know, with digital, um, you know, digitally getting out there on social media and stuff. Um, to be honest, I'm probably not utilizing it the best way. Like, you know, I'm probably not um, doing the best job with um, using social media and stuff. But I, I just like I post my music in there, but there's probably a better way for or to target your audience. So, I mean, like, I'm probably not utilizing it the best way. But, the, like, I just, to me, social media, social media is just so I can put it on the internet. And yeah. I really use it just so I can um, send that to, like, promoters or to people who organize, to event organizers and all that. That's what it is to me. That, that's the tool that I use it for because I really mm. like to do that live gig show shit. So, um. Mm. Me putting my music on social media is just a tool so I can send that an email to the event organizer so I can get on that stage because that's where all the yep. fun is. That's where all the energy is. That's where you can really interact with people and give them a little bit of yourself. Yeah, so now, like um, social media to me is just a tool. Now, have you, have you faced resistance because you're a Kiwi hip-hop artist? When you're trying to get into um, venues to do that, um, not really. Uh, I haven't had a, um, I haven't had many. I haven't really run into any problems. Like, I mean, I guess the problem would be um, we're looking for somebody who's a bit more established. Apply next year, you know. Probably that's yeah. probably the only problem that I've really run into other than that like it's a uh, yeah cool man come and be a part of this i'm like yeah cool. excellent well that yeah, just so shows that, that I mean, the responses haven't been too bad i've been quite fortunate that just shows i think that the that people are understanding a bit more before because of all this history that we have for the last 20 odd years 30 odd years that our music is actually good you know that um people are actually believe in themselves and like you mentioned earlier about resource getting resources to um you know uh what is it um you said something about like helping yourself get further um learning more resources and stuff and buying buying music because you believe yeah. in yourself and you um, um and because of that, i think people are realizing that the more you out there the more open the um, the, um, the doors get that's that's exactly it that's exactly it is that um yep if you're the more active you are the more doors are going to open for you you know and i've found that out personally for myself the more shows that i did the you know i do little shows do shows at a bar then those shows at a bar because i've done it so much and people who see me they ask me to come and be a part of this festival and so you know the shows just get bigger and bigger and bigger and yeah, I really like that, man. I really like that. But I just enjoy being on stage and having fun. I mean, don't get it twisted, man. I've been booed before. But I only got booed <laughs> by females because those females yeah. wanted to see Bow Wow take his shirt off. Yeah. You know, all the all, all, all the homies in the crowd, they were feeling me. But it's just the ladies, you know, they just, the, man, get the, yeah. get, if you ain't going to take your shirt off, motherfucker, get the fuck off the stage. <laughs> Well, I mean, they're they're probably all half drunk anyway, and they've been they've been hanging out to watch Bow Wow take a shirt off because hey, oh man, they um, were brutal, you know, man. They not... were heckling, man. But but yeah. I mean, in saying that, it was a really good, humbling, testing experience. You know, like it could have gone two ways for me. I could have gone on that mic and said, "Cut this shit, fuck you, motherfuckers." You know, I could have went <laughs> off on them, but you yeah. know, because I've been doing it for. You know, I've done so many shows and I've been doing it for a little bit of time. Um, I got taught to be a professional. And what does a professional yeah. do? Regardless, a professional keeps going. A professional does yeah. not stop. A professional finishes their set, walks off with their yeah. mana intact, and that's it, you know? 
So that's what I did. And that's, that comes with learning, right? That comes with just doing it and doing it and doing an experience. I mean, uh, yeah. like the first time I ever got on stage, I cried. I boiled my eyes out and I, because I had to give a speech. First time. Right. This is like when I was in high school, 15, you know, 30 odd years ago. And I was like, I'll never do this again. You know, and I've been on stage many times since then. And I've been fine. But then every time, like, the weird thing is, do you still get stage fright? Always. Always. Yep. I never eat and I never drink before I go on stage because I know if I do, I'm going to throw up. And nobody wants to be that guy. You know, like, right. I mean, no. you just have to watch. What's that movie? Is it Stand By Me? Where they go to that pie eating contest and then everybody starts throwing up on everyone and then the whole crowd ends up throwing up as well? I can't remember. It's a movie, well, man. Well, Stand By, Stand By Me is about the body. You know, they go looking yeah, for the body. Uh, yeah, I no, I think it is Stand By Me. One of the boys are telling a story about this big boy and he mm. wanted to get revenge. And so he done that. He packed himself up on the pies and ended up screwing on the contestants and then it just domino effect from there. So yeah, I, I yeah. I would I nobody wants to be that guy. So I don't eat or drink before I perform because you know my stomach is just crazy, man, and I'm always nervous. But once I get into the flow of things, yeah, it's it's fine. Oh, I got a question here in comments. Uh, this is from John, and he's asking, "Where does MC grow up, school, etc.?" What's up, John? Thank you for your question. I appreciate that. Um, so I I was born in Auckland National Women's Hospital. Damn, I bet you ain't heard that for a minute. <laughs> I was born in Auckland, and I uh, yeah, I was schooled in Onehanga, and now I live in my city where my bloodline comes from here in Whangarei. My family come from the south side of Whangarei, so it is, um, it's, it's special for me to live here. Like, you know, I'm from here, but I'm really, really from here. Yeah. And, and, and my family this... still live in um, Auckland City and in the, in the place where I grew up, but yeah, I'm glad that I live in the, in, on the land where my bloodline, where all my ancestors walked. And I think that's that's the pride that comes with from where you are, and I, I think um, and that actually makes you want to do more. And you know, it's like I mean, I talk to the, my guys ago when we when we do our stuff, it's because we want to do it with our people, right? <laughs> we want to do it with the locals. I mean, sure, we draw, draw with um, work with other people overseas, but we want to get people locally involved with what we do because then that local dollar expands to the local dollar further and yeah. further in the local community and um and, and and it's not i mean you you work with kids as well don't you i have but, yeah like at, at schools and stuff and like events like that oh yeah so like i've um um through my time of just doing music i've had the opportunity to just go into schools and um, do like a performance and sit down and explain what I do as a musician and, you know, just perform some songs, talk about the stories behind those songs and just pretty much just share my craft. And yeah, that's pretty much what I do. And I mean, I've, I've had quite a few overwhelming responses from different um, schools that I've been able to go into. Like um, I've gone into Okaho College up in Okaho. I've gone to Te Kura Kaupapa, yep. Kohe Kohe. Um, man, where else have I been? I've been out to a couple of primary schools out in Pāwarua Bay. And the kids mm. out there, like, you know, I, was, I mean, that was kind of different for me because it was a primary school and I thought, oh, I don't know how these kids are going to react to an old man's, well, you know what I'm saying, the age gap between yep, them and yep. myself. Um, how they would react to my music, but man, it was like a bomb went off in their place. It was crazy. Kids loved that shit, and I mean, like that made me happy, you know, because I felt like that man. I'm doing a little bit of something for these kids who live in my backyard. Maybe there's a kid here who really, really likes hip hop, and he's and he doesn't have anybody else around him 
And now that he see me here, maybe that would inspire him to be like, yo, I just saw this dude come to my school. Maybe I can do something. You know what I mean? Like things like that, man, just inspiring young ones and giving back to the community and helping, you know, helping people. That's that's a big thing for me. Like if I ever get through a door, I want to be able to go through that door but still keep my hand behind me so I can pull my people yeah. through. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's, 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 a that's, me, anyway. pe- that's a difference in people, isn't it, uh, and leaders. See, there's leaders and then there's leaders, and the leaders are always looking back with a hand out while they're having a hand out in front, right? Like, just as you said, because as they're trying to go towards the front, they're still, still going, who else is going to follow me and help them follow you behind you? Because one day we won't be here. So yeah. where is the rest of the music going to come from, right? Where is the rest of the art going to come from when we're not here? And so if, if, you, if you think that, oh, you know, they're going to take my place and, you know, they're going to take my spot, that's not the way to think. And I've, I've actually heard people, you know, say that sort of thing. It's like, oh, yeah, I don't want to help them because they might be taking my spot. They might take my job. But right. at the end of the day, those guys are going to come and take our spot anyway, whether we want them to or not, because they're going to work for that spot. As long as they work for that spot, they will earn that spot and they'll stay in that spot until somebody else takes their spot. Because it's a moving world. We, we're not here for eternity. The only thing we that we leave behind is what we've done, right? Our legacy that, that, of work. That that's pretty much it, bro. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it, man. And not yeah, I just like helping people, man. Like especially those people who are interested in the same things or in the same kind of field, creative field that I'm in. I mean, like if if you can do it, why wouldn't you? you know, like straight up, why wouldn't you? Like why would you just leave? Somebody else who has the same amount of passion as you do, yeah. There, when you could help them come where you are, like, yeah. And I, I mean, it's so the- crazy to me if you don't do that, but I mean, some people don't. I mean, yeah. you know, that's that's their decision. Mm. But I but mean, the other like, thing for me, if you if you're mentoring someone like that, right? If you're mentoring something like that, you actually get that spirit back in you as well you know that that goodness that because you're teaching somebody passing some, your knowledge on because we don't we don't actually are on our own we're not an island because other people have mentored us as well you know and you, yeah. you've been influenced by other people as well you've had other music musicians that you enjoyed right yeah. that have helped you better your music and uh in time somebody else will be influenced by your music or if they're not already um so one of the questions um We've got here as um, John's asking, are you signed up to anyone? I uh, um, example Don Raid or anybody, or are you on your own? With um, I know you're with Frenicus and stuff, but part of that team, is there any signature that you uh, on a contract that you put down? Oh nah, and I would no, no, no. I'm I'm just I'm an indie artist, you know. Like, and I think that's the beauty, especially now. Like, you mm. don't actually have to be signed anymore. You can just, Mm. you have all the tools at your disposal and you can just do it all on your own. Like literally, you can do it all on your own. And I mean, that's just how I've been operating. I mean, I have a nine to five and I'm really, really grateful for that. And um, yeah, Mm. as a musician, I've just been doing it myself. I mean, I'm nosy, so I'm already going to go have a look anyways. But um, yeah, yeah I've, I've already, I've also fallen on my face and made mistakes a thousand times. But yeah. it's, you know, I don't lose. I either win or I learn. So, yeah, all those times yeah. I've fallen on my face are just lessons, man. And I've learned just not to do that. What I've done, you know, even if it's something small, just tweak it a little bit. And, you know, a win will come eventually after you've learned something. So, yeah, well, and I mean, the just, thing. I mean, oh, just what we were going back to before, like the reason yeah. why I help people is because when I was a younger, when like when I was a youth, there was nobody around me who had knowledge mm. of doing anything. So I mean, like now as I'm older and I've had and I've already been mentored and I had my own mentor, shout outs to Brent B, DJ Definite for mentoring me. And um, mm. yeah, so I just want to do that because I didn't have no big homies around me to say, hey, man, you got a talent. 
you need to go home. Stop hanging around out here on the, uh, out here on the corner with all these other bad boys, man. Go home and work on your craft. Come back and see me, and let's go and try and get you a gig. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have that. So now mm. that I have the knowledge and I know how to do that for myself, I want to do that for you know the the next generation or just even people my own age who want to take the leap and the jump to step out of their bedroom and actually go out there and see what it's like, man. You know, I can do well, that. Because, and I think that's important. The, the commitment factor, right? I mean, like a, 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 a someone who loves their art will commit to it. There's a lot of people who think that, you know, who are hobbyists, uh, the diff, you know, and that's fine yeah. and dandy. There's a difference between a hobbyist and, there's a, um, and an artist. An artist commits to what they do. And they'll, you know, and they full on, don't worry about, I mean, I've made so many mistakes, dude, to where I'm now. I've made, mis I make mistakes every week if I, if I think about it, right? Um, you know, it's just the commitment to stick to it. You know, uh, I think a lot of, a lot of young ones don't realize that there's, you got to have a commitment to stick to it. And how do you get that across to them when you're talking to these guys, to the, you know, to the people that might be looking for mentorship? How do you uh, get them to say, hey, look, I know, you know, it seems hard, but if you stick to it, you know, how do you get them to do that? Um, like I'm just straight up, bro. Like if I don't actually go looking, I don't go looking for like people per, per se. I don't, I don't do that. I just, you know, like, I just do what I do, man. And if people like that and they want to know more, if they think that I can help them in some way, then that usually brings people to me. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, just me doing that. Because I like to think that um, the mahi that I do and the mahi that I put out has, is, is positive. And I like to think that because I'm doing that, that positivity is the magnet that will bring like-minded people to me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if that's the way that I look at it. And then, and then if the questions arise, like, like how did you do this? And then, well, then let's chop it up, man. I'm keen to help you if you're keen to put in the work. And you know, it's it's all it's on you, man. Like I can't force you to do anything, and it isn't yeah. easy. Like this, don't don't. You know, don't think it's easy because it's not. It's not as easy as making a song and uploading it and that's it. It's yeah. not that easy. It depends. It depends, though. You know, some yeah. people only want to do that and some people want to go further. It it's totally depends because, like, how I really, really love performing and I really, really love it, I, you know, like yourself, at one time, I really, really hated it at the beginning. Um, Like, well, when I hooked up with my bro, Brent, he knew that I had already recorded music, but he also knew that I don't have any live experience. And he had just shit tons. Now, he was in the music industry back in the day in the early 2000s, and he was doing this thing. So he had shit tons of experience. And he just asked me, um, shall we go busking? And I thought, why? I, I, I make hip-hop music. What does busking have to do with me? So I didn't know that he was preparing me, and so we started doing it. And I mean, I, I, I was like, what if nobody likes me while we're going busking? What if nobody likes what they hear? And, you know, and he said something to me that was very, very humbling. He said, bro, nobody's there to listen to you. Mm. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, and that's true. Like, you know, when you're busking out on the street, nobody is there to listen to you unless they follow you and they're there to support you. But other than that, you're just, yeah. somebody out there on the street doing what you do and he said if people are there to listen to you you'll stop them because they'll like what they hear and then they'll stop and look at you but other than that they ain't out there like nobody's out there to come and see you as a busker mm. so again man that was very sobering very humbling and i thought damn that, that's pretty raw pretty harsh but it's true and from that i grew from that you know what i mean like it Little by little, little by little, man. I was performing looking sideways for like a really long time. And now I just love performing. Yeah. So like it came with time and experience and yeah. fuck ups and all that other shit on stage that um you try and cover up. Yeah. Hopefully that nobody notices. Yeah, just like a lot of learning, man. 
but it's fun. It's fun. And if I can just so, help um, people through that, yeah, cool. So you've got um, this. You've got the, um, a song on on an album coming out soon. Um, where where can people find your work? Um, to be honest, like I've, I've okay, I have music out there that's on YouTube, so you'll be mm -hmm. able to find it under my name, MC Black Sword. But like I said, it's it's what would be called, what would be considered. Um, low quality or like mixtape shit because I'm only rapping over beats that aren't mine. You know what mm. I mean? That so it, it's um, yeah. But the stories are there. Like if you love storytelling and if you love good lyrics and good rhymes, then by all means go check it out because I pride myself on that shit. But it's it's yeah. It's just like um, me rapping over YouTube beats. Hence the reason why I wanted to invest in myself with some, yeah. you know, really, really good quality beats. And then I can put my craft on top of that. And then I can have something that I can really be proud of to put out mm -hmm. to the community for myself. But I'm also fortunate enough to work with a band like Ferandicus and they're already putting their album out. And I was, I'm, I'm just blessed to be a part of that shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the guy who's, who's ever mixing it, Making me sound like a god, so yo, mm. shout outs to the engineer whoever's mixing that shit, and shout outs to Ferandicus for putting me on, mm. because I thought that was nuts. That 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 is um, Medi and Ben. It's it's mm. them, man. Those are the brothers who put me on, who who decided to take a chance and think we don't do this. We don't know if he'll be down. But we're going to ask. And, you know, they like that different shit. I like that different shit too. So, yeah. Well, I, I was fortunate enough to play with them live, do live shows with them, and make a couple of songs too. And I'm quite hype about it, man. Because we already put – they already put one out that I featured on. And, yeah, I really like the sound of that. That was Shame on You. And, I mean, you were telling me that you've heard the sneak peek before I have. Damn. Oh, no. I, I just had Matt. Uh, Matt had, you know, seen them, heard the master, and he was excited about it. He said he's, he just really blew that away. So I'm looking forward to the album when it drops. So you know, um, hopefully it'll be soon. But I mean, all these things time take time, and so you know, I, I hopefully they're able to get it out um, soon. Um, any last words? We'll hit the one hour mark. I don't want to hold you up too much, and you know, oh, yeah, really, shit. It didn't seem like it, right? Bro, crazy. Um, so any last, last words? words? Um, I would just like, first of all, I would just like to say thank you to you, my brother, for allowing me to come on to your oh, show, good. for giving me this opportunity, man. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you and what you do and your mahi out there in the community. I see you. I Thanks, support bro. you. You know what I'm saying? So thank you very much, man. Stay blessed and and to everybody who's tuned in tonight, um, thank you very much as well. Continue to follow this man because he's doing incredible things in our community as well. He's one of those silent horses that nobody really wants to talk about, but they know he's there, so they don't want to talk about it. My man, I'm going to talk about it. I love the mahi that you're doing. I love this mahi thank that you. you're doing. You know what I'm saying? You're using the platform to put your locals on. Myself, I'm an example of that. Mm. I shout out to you for doing your work, my bro, and your contribution to the community of Whangarei as well, man. And um, if to anybody else, you know, despite your age, like I said, I'm 37, man, and I'm I'm still making music because it's my passion. I love that shit. And if if that's how you feel, regardless of the genre, do that shit. Do what makes you feel good, man. If it isn't music, you know, art, whatever, whatever creative um thing that you do do it and if you can help somebody else school somebody else up you know whatever it may be um do it because it's good for you it's good for your soul it's not only good for them it's good for you as a human being it makes you feel good and that's the universe giving you back that good karma what goes around comes around so if you if you get an opportunity to do that to give somebody a hand up, I encourage you to do that. And um, shout-outs to all the local MCs in Whangarei. 
um, to the Naughty North Movement brothers, to the Coastal ENT brothers, and to all my other brothers that are doing it here as well, mm -hmm. to all the young ones that are doing it here, man, to Creative Minds, to Jay Fuego, and you know what I'm saying, all these other young cats that are coming up locally, keep, you know, shout outs to you dudes, man, and to everybody mm -hmm. else. Namihi Aroha, Kyokoto Katsua. Shout out to you, my brother. Those are my last words, man. Excellent. Thank you for that. So one of the things before we close down here, um, now that everybody's been locked up for seven, eight weeks, right? We need a we need a uh, we need a hip hop uh, event. Right. We need we need we need a musical event here. I know we ourselves we're doing a comic book pop culture event. Uh, I know there's going to be some, you know, uh, we've got uh, Matariki, right? Slowly there'll be small groups of that happening, so I'm very excited. Uh, but we do need a hip hop event uh, and a musical event to happen as we come out of this, because it'll be good to just for uh, for the Wairoa. Right for the spirits of the people, uh, for the soul of our people, to be able to just gather together and just, hey, you know, let's hang out, um, you know, yeah. because it, I feel like a caged animal, you know, um, all these um, seven weeks. After four weeks, I was like, ah, you know, I mean, I do my stuff, I do everything from home, right, business and everything, but I still felt like a caged animal. So I'm like, we need big events. <laughs> so, you know. Um, I think spread the word out and see who wants to do something at 116, right? On a Saturday day, like there was one last year that um, um, the suicide thing um, put on, right? And that was a great event, you know, in the daytime. The curtains closed, nice and dark. That place would rock. We could get back, you know, fight. You talk about Naughty North and all these guys. All you need, the music and all, I mean, uh, the instruments, are all, I mean, not instruments, the speakers and all that. Or all there, right? So I think. Oh um, right, the event you're talking about at one one six was the um, low budget brotherhood one, and we all yeah. met up there. And we all done our little um, yeah, we all went there and shared our spoken yeah. word and all that shit based around that stuff. And you know, the yes, yes. Like, Shout out to Andrew and the low budget brotherhood boys too. Yeah, we need another one of those. Um, as soon as we're allowed to do it, I think we. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to doing plunge as soon as we're allowed to do it. As soon as the number a number goes up to one hundred, we're doing plunge. So if, as soon as the number goes, you know, over one hundred, let's do a low budget brotherhood thing. You know, um, get those guys together and say, hey, one one six. You know, a couple bucks at a dollar cover the charges, and you know, uh, that's the thing I like about our, our our community is that we can get together very fast, right? Yeah, yeah. And the costs of doing it at at one one six are so are low enough. That we can get together and do it really fast, and uh, yeah. and uh, from what I know is that there's uh, because of what's happened up till August and after I uh, September Saturdays are free, right? Uh, so right. Uh, I mean, people are going to be wanting to get out of the cage of their homes and uh, celebrate with each other, and I think yeah, um, doing something um, in that and you know with hip hop. Putting an event on like that, I mean, there's no need for a bar, no nothing like that. It's just music and people just hanging out, you know. Well, maybe Young to um, from what I hear is that Ants wanted to um, put on like Luna Bar, something to do with his coffee business there as well. Mm. So maybe yeah. he's got something cooking up. Shout out to Ants, shout out to Luna Expresso as well. And um, yeah. yeah, I think he might have something in the bag that's getting planned, bro. So you excellent. Know. And I mean, and he's, he's, to he's one with, one uh, six, is, one six as well to Maddie and Laurel and every or the whole team down yeah. there. Because um, yeah, without you guys, man, I wouldn't um have a platform. Like when I when uh, Maddie said that I could become a Beagle Radio DJ, like I flipped, bro. Because I told him, "Are you sure?" I'm going to be playing hip-hop music. He goes, yeah, man, you can play whatever you want. I thought, holy shit, this yeah. guy's insane. And so, yeah, I've been connected to 116 ever since. They still ain't kicked me out. So, yeah, yeah, it's awesome, but, man. I mean, that's the thing about our community. There's so many good people looking to connect with each other and promote each other. 
and I think that's a good thing about that is that we, you know, uh, we're able to um, keep while we're walking, we have our hands out, and they have their hand out, hands out to us, right? And um, and I think that's a great thing about our community, and we, and it's a privilege to be part of it. And I think um, yeah. that's a greatness of Whangarei, you know. Um, um, it's just there's so many people willing to help, and and one one six with a bigger radio station is a great place to learn your skill on to how to MC if you want to be hip hop, right? Get that radio, get that mic voice. Get you know, learn yeah, how to be confident. Good place to hone your skills, man. It's a very good place All to right, hone brother. your skills. Um, 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 tell them where you can find you. Um, you can find me like on social media and stuff. Yep, okay, so you can find me mostly my um, the page that I use is my artist page, just under the name MC Black Sword. That's where I do all my updates and all that other stuff. And I'm sure I'll be putting um, some stuff out there soon. Like I do like random videos of me doing a verse here and there. I'll just write something and share it there. But um, that's what that's musically. That's the place where I'm more active at. And like you said, mm. um, you've heard songs before I've heard it. So I know I'm going to be posting music there. Man, you've got me hyped for this song because I haven't heard it yet. But I've always loved this song, Only You. I've always loved it, so I can't wait to hear it. I, I, you know, I've loved it, and I'm sure if people love stories, they will also love it. And, I mean, this got the vocals of the ladies, and it's got the band behind it. You know, man, it's, it's, something, it's something special, man. You know, it's, it's, not, it's, it's a hip-hop song, but it's not a hip-hop song. You know, it's, it's just got, yeah, it's got a bit of everything. It's awesome. I can't wait to so, hear it. Maddie, if you're watching, send me that link. All right. Thank you, brother. Oh, and thank you to everybody who's watching. Uh, join us again. If you're on Facebook, um, thank you for watching. And if you're on, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe, like the button, get it, um, share it if you can. But thank you for watching. We'll have more videos all the time coming out about our local community people. And also, you'll notice from around the world and um, in comic books, etc. Uh, Kakite Ano, thank you so much. Keep well. The All man, the best to your George, family. The Keep safe. And thank you, my guest, uh, MC Black Sword. Uh, thank you so much. And hopefully, yeah, we get this, um, get to see this album very soon. Yeah. Let's get it in, brother. Bless my man. Shout out to all the viewers. Peace. Thank you. And we are